Before I came, it's like the ideology of like education in the U.S. in the best country in the world is like deeply um, like rooted in everyone's hearts. The reason why I s escaped from China to Canada is that the big reason is because of education. Um, like I've been having a lot of fun in Canada because of like their workload and their like the way to study, like the way of teaching are so relaxing. They are not really restrict on what topic you are working on, mm -hmm. and they don't like really affecting your idea. What they do is give you suggestions, advice. Mm -hmm. Whether you take or not, they that's what they do. The students are, and the teachers, professors are on the like same level. They respect each other very well. around like holiday like mid-autumn festival or spring festival which we don't have holiday here but uh, everyone in China was like celebrating and kind of like it's like oh I'm sitting along here it's like all my family getting together. I have a really hard time to like talk like open my mouth and really talk. When I first came here I really like uh, mo mocha latte from Starbucks so I I ordered it maybe because my accent accent or maybe because like they kind of don't get that order very often so they always give me mocha coffee uh, the chinese characters only represent the meanings not the pronunciations that's totally different from what we, like the western world which the language is based on the pronunciation because they're so diversity they have like different colors people like different kind of people um, from different countries so they have their own group as like national groups that's a like a really big reason that I am kind of not getting used to it. It like, seems like you have to learn a lot of rules to talk to people in the way, the specific way that they like. We took a lift, and right after we get into the car, the lift drivers ask us how to speak monkey in Chinese. Racism is something that very complicated. Um, it's like. Uh, almost like systematic, like institutional. When you're in in school and you're trying to learn life, you label people because you're trying to organize them and you're trying to learn like this person's from this place or that place. More it's like how you feel and how you interact with people and how like it's more like body language. I might not sit next to you. I might sit like across the room mm -hmm. for you. I don't blend them. Like um, I don't. I don't. Um, like I don't imagine people all like are open and being universalism like as everyone else and like being acceptable with different culture like we kind of need to um, understand that and just like um, deal with that in our own way. Before I came to America I thought like Canada and America are the same like oh are on day that same. All we have for the foreigners is based based on the media, especially when when China the government have total control of the media. So basically, what we had the stereotypes controlled by them. There's a lot of misunderstanding because Chinese people are often like in a huddle, like in a group of a lot of Chinese people, and they're all speaking um, Chinese, and a lot of uh, native students like don't understand Chinese. This is very old, like people think Chinese people are um, good at math or <laughs> something um, or they're um, really playing everything safe, like not willing to take um, chances or um, I think some of them actually are true. Like I think I, I don't think all stereotypes are useless. They, they they still sometimes serve for us to like really get a perspective on of the world international students if it's like a negative viewpoint on them then like we almost don't want to be associated mm -hmm. with that viewpoint so we sort of like want to pull away especially like when china is changing so much i think um the stereotype 30 years ago right now is like not holding i sometimes i i find myself yeah like i i don't know what to think about you guys it's not what we look like it's the background it's the system the the political system you have, that's your identity. Like, I'm Chinese, and you're Taiwanese. Mm -hmm. you were, we're basically Chinese, 
it was, was, we are Chinese too, but uh, you have the background. You have the, your background is capitalism with democracy. I don't know, I'm from, I, it's totally different for me. So that's the stereotype. Different tribes fighting each other for power. And like now we call them all Chinese, they're all Chinese people. Oh yeah. But like back then, they're not all Chinese people. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's, like that's because true. they're that's all their like like individual 2000, village. And it's 3,000 years ago. Even like, People from northern China and southern China they come to come to the U.S. They have different they have different culture background within China. This this village and that village, which is like 50 miles away, and they, yeah, they kind of so different. Even if people are speaking Mandarin, the like common language, there's different accents and different slang words. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. It's like. A, some, uh, I think the English speakers, they don't understand like how this dialogue, how different it can be. Actually, it can be like so, maybe from like the... Like Americans stereotype Asians as like, like you know, like um, Chinese, Japanese, Korean people. Yeah, they look the same. Like, we, <laughs> they all should get along. Yeah, but yeah. They, they speak completely different languages and they call different places home. What makes me comfortable in America is they have a widely available chance. I can study anything I am interested without any bothering and prejudice from the others. America is um, a country of freedom, like you can do whatever you want, you can speak whatever you want. Yes, we are American and this is, this is our history and this is ours. Um, but, but other people might not see us that way. Mm -hmm. And then, but if I go back to Taiwan or if I go visit China, like we're, we're labeled as like American, um, you know, we don't quite like 100% fit in there either. Mm -hmm. But if it's in my hometown, like if you want to do like something kind of weird, or crazy, like people will stop you. When I grow my hair long, like uh, in the U.S., and then go back to China, like, like my parents don't really like it. It's because they kind of have had the ideology of like boys should be have like short hair and girls should have long hair. And if you have like long hair as a boy, you have problems. Like it's just and also it, it, it's like a symbol for them as like rebellions and being a bad boy. So they kind of was like you have to cut your hair, otherwise you have to find your own place to stay from last year like uh, the president changed the constitution of that like that's a big change mm -hmm. and uh, this decade from 2010 we can see this really huge control over the the media in high school and middle school we have access to facebook and google we have the access to youtube i have we have all of that but they changed that so it's not like we're getting open and open gradually. It's not. It's like when the leader is changing, they're changing the direction. Every decade is so different from each other. And uh, sometimes people don't realize that. The government's view on the people is, like, they see them as, a, like, a group. No, they don't um, see them as individually, mm -hmm. like, individual, have, which everybody has rights. So they don't care about people themselves. They care about how to maintain the situation, like have the, the power. The power needs to be contained. Throughout history, like the civilians like being watched is kind of how like the leadership used to enforce their uh, control. Uh, like no matter where, not only in China, like um, even in like Greek, like they have this wall on the ear thing, like they ca really carve a, a ear on the wall. So the, like the king can hear everyone talking in his castle, like in his room. Like in America, we can see that like we can see the connection between like we can we can have we have memories and connections go back to the 80s or to the 70s. We have the music, we have the TV shows, we have all the images of the history, right? But come back to China, that's totally different. Like 
I was born in 1990, but my memory of 1990s kind of like run away mm -hmm. because they never bring back the TV shows, the music of 1990s or the 80s. Nobody list. Everybody forgot the technology development from like facial recognizes recognize system, online shopping, like um, really fast shipping, low cost, and also um, this uh, artificial intelligence. People back in China doesn't realize the situation because the result is everybody's getting richer and when you're getting richer you just don't care. The same pattern but it's just like with the enforcements of technology with like your phone and uh, with the camera on the street and with the like the things you buy and all this like mass data um, uh, like algorithm. Class issues is basically it's like the copy version of uh, capitalism, because like here in America, we still have that. And the problems that we have is pretty much the same. All these things are really your daily life. You don't re realize you're being watched like in these ways. Like you, you just take your phone with you everywhere and you don't know, like it's sending your geolocation to the, to the, uh, to the server and those can reveal a lot of things about you. And it's, they're not consistent, right? It's, like yeah, they're changing their mind. Yeah, it's not like changing we're going to open or we're going to shut down, like we close ourselves. No, it's not, it's, it's like, it's changed, like you don't know where, where it's gonna go. I want to uh, raise people's awareness about how they, they are constantly being watched and they're not thinking about it. What happened in uh, 1989, they kind of sh closed the country and to you know, shut down the people's voice in the beginning of the 1990s, but they kind of opened it up in the late 1990s. So in the 80s, they still they, they have the, the rules changing like all of that too. So the, the problem is like we don't, we don't have any ideas what's going to happen in the future. So now the president said that he can be the president forever and uh, we don't know which this means, like where, where it's going to go. What if they go back to what happened in the 70s? We don't, nobody wants that to be coming back, but I'm not sure. What happened in the 70s? Yeah, the, the Cultural Revolution. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Explain what that was. So yeah, during that time, it's like, uh, so uh, generally the, the president, uh, Mao was, was not the president anymore, but he still wanted to ha have that control. So he kind of like talked to all the people from all of the country and say we need to, you know, kind of rev, rev, have the revolution over those leaders, the governments between him, the Mao, and the people. So nobody goes to work, nobody goes to school, and the whole society just shut down. And nobody goes to school. The, all the like teachers. Doctors didn't work anymore, and they can everything is not right. So we we need to revolute everything we have the ch ch the Chinese tradition. They shut down all of the schools. Yeah, nobody goes to school. The university just they close it for ten, years, five or seven years. My mom doesn't go to school. He she was in the uh, primary school, mm -hmm. so she she would just not going to school. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's just, just have fun. And, and, well, what, what kind of effects do you think it has. that caused? So, like, we, all, we all know like the, the, the Chinese tradition. What is the Chinese and the tradition? tradition? We can s sense something from that, from the Japanese culture and the Korean culture, like how people treat each other, how people treat, like treat each other, how people face With the respect. the respect, which is really, really important, and f to the ancestors, and to to what ancestors give us the culture, mm -hmm. the knowledge. So the tradition from that's all it's all gone. So during that time, everything is not right. 
of course we know some some tradition is not really good like the the, the female problem like the, they treat female not really yeah, the good patriarchal yeah society. yeah the, the sexist and uh, they have something that which is not good but when you say everything is not right they kind of like target every aspect of the tradition they 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 think everything is not good so they kind of destroy all of that and they burned the they burned the boot and they kind of like they talk to they talk to the kind of trying to break the families because the family in China is the most important un unit like they try to break that and uh, so I have a story. Yeah, like like parents and children were fighting. Yeah, yeah, they're fighting. They they trying to encourage the children to report their uh, parents for doing something bad. But usually in the traditional Chinese culture, like you don't you talk mean, back to your parents. Yeah, you don't talk back. No, it's like you need to protect your parents. That's the most important things. Yeah. Even yeah. though, for example, like your father commit like uh, murder he did something bad your father did something bad as a son i need to protect him mm. that's the most important thing to me i need to protect him because he's my father even though he did something right yeah. there's something wrong so that's kind of the tradition my grandma used to tell me used to tell me that she like in her in her in her house she has a lot of plate fancy plate with mouse portrait on it and this one time she ha she has like you know she has this uh, used like uh, what what kind of cloth which you, you know just wash the dishes those mm -hmm. clothes she used that to clean the portrait uh, clean those plates which have mouse portrait on it and my That's mom a fancy plate <laughs> yeah and he she used the cloth which is washing dishes and my mom. She was only like seven years old. She s saw that, and she said, "I'm gonna report you to the school because you use that to clean. You are th th this is so bad. You, you use that. I I will I will report you. So this is happened so like uh, to every family. And the kid was what, s seven. Yeah. Your mom. Yeah. Did that break your family apart? Yeah. This uh dear yeah, my 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 family from my mother's side kind of broke down during the uh, revolution culture because uh, uh, my my grandpa he went to the prison because some somebody reported on him but he said he never said anything bad to anybody except his wife because you know he he know this is a really serious situation so he really sh you know closed his mm -hmm. mouth but to his wife, to my grandma, he said something. And he, he, somebody report him about the information. And he realized that, yeah, it must be her. There's nobody else. So what do you, what do you expect, expect that? So he went to the prison for a couple of years. And he went out, the marriage broke down, right? They never went back well because he always suspect uh, his wife is the one who was the one who report him. There could be other spies. They could, <laughs> but he said he never say anything. He he only says something, you know, when they they're alone and they say something. And he find out the government knows those informations. He only told to his wife. But this is this That's is my so not scary. Like there's no security cameras. Back the, yeah, then. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. No, no, there's no, no audio evidence. Tapes. There's no a evidence, but this is like a lot of families. The, the family break down. Well, what did you do? Like, what? Well, mm. You say something bad, right? And they just, you know, mentally torture you or something. Mm. And that's really common during that time. But during their lifetime, they experience so many things. They have the they live in through the 30s and the 40s, where they don't have the communism take over the country, and then they. Your well, grandparents. Yeah, when they welcome the communism who took, took over the country and they lived through all those decades. And during their lifetime, they, everything's so confused. Because every decade, they have different direction of life. Like, when they were 20s, they think, they think 
you know, the, 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 the life value should be like this. And when the communism come over, yeah, what we, have, what we had it was wrong. So they changed their life value. And they keep changing, and they got confused. And then when they come to the so capitalism, capitalism society right now, and they think money is the, the god right now, but uh, 40 years ago, money is the, the hell, is the evil. Mm-hmm. And that was told by the communism in the 60s and 50s, and then money money's the worst. We need to fight America. Of course, it's going to be confused for us, too, as our us our generation gets older, we realize that. It's like, the, why is this updating? Why is the value changing all the time? Yeah, it's like time is changing, values are changing. Yeah. And um, so also this idea of um, Chinese coming to America, mm-hmm. um, immigrating at different, different points in time yeah um they also have a different understanding of like what chinese culture is and what it means to be chinese based on the time period yeah. they came um, when they leave mm-hmm. when they left the country mm-hmm. if they left in the 70s they have the value system which back focus on the 70s and when they come to america they host their memory and that and the people who come from the 90s, those people cannot communicate with each other anymore. That's like the Chinese American have this problem. It's really have that. Like you come, you ho- you 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 come you you come to America in the 90s with the people who come to America now. They have they have a totally different value system because back in the country they changed. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the problems that the Chinese America has here, like why they 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 don't host together they don't they don't like become a union and they they welcome each other because they're not just the language barrier like different dialect you yeah, we talked about the different language we we're talking about because the country is so big, yeah, yeah, um, that's one thing with many too. different regions.